So just a quick note before we start, we did have a couple of difficulties with the new platform we were trying out. So the audio isn't as good as usual in the beginning, but uh, it switches over about 10 minutes in and sounds as awesome as always. Anyways, enjoy this episode with Sydney Gidabudai. All right. So I'm excited. Today on the show, we have Sydney Gidabudai, and he is a runner for Roots Running out in Boulder, Colorado. He's teammates with uh, Noah Drotti, Aaliyah Gray. Now, I thought I saw you running with like 10 men. Are you? He used to. Okay, so that's, and yeah. that's yeah, so, been changed. Yeah, yeah, that's been changed. I was, uh, I was with them for uh, just about a year and a half, and, um, you know, I think with the the coaching change and uh, as a result of may- maybe other changes in, in the past, I, I felt like I, I wanted a more consistent place. Um, I knew I wanted to stick in Boulder because it's, it's amazing for, for running and, and also just like life in general. It's, it's, it's got a good mix of, um, you know, kind of like a, a busier lifestyle than I'm, than I was used to in college in Alamosa, which is a town of like 10,000 people. And like my hometown of where like Orange County, California, where it was like, you know, just major highways everywhere. And it's just everything's going on at once. And so it's a good mix for me. And and so staying in Boulder was, was huge, you know, in, in terms of my transition from yeah. Tin Man to the Roots. Alamosa has high altitude as well, right? Is it which one's higher, Boulder or Alamosa? Uh, Alamosa, yeah, certainly. It's, Alamosa is at seventy five hundred feet, and Boulder is at like fifty three hundred feet. Mm-hmm. Wow! Wow! I didn't yeah. realize it was that high. It's a big difference. So yeah. at Alamosa, you ran for Adam State, which uh, pretty much one of the most successful, I guess, D two programs for running. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and while you were there, you hold the five k second fastest five k, I believe, at Adam State, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of had a pretty good run while you were there, no pun intended. Um, yeah. Well, you probably intended that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a great experience. Yeah, I was actually... So I, I'm the school record holder in the 5K at Adams, but I was I was second all-time for Division II. Second? And, so. Yeah. Second, I, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah <laughs> that's where that, like, mix-up is. But, yeah, no, I think um, it, it was a great time, and I think it's, like, led me into you know who I am now and it's like I'm still figuring myself out in in the professional running world but uh it's given me like a great uh stepping stone to to where I'm going I think for sure I mean and I think it's pretty clear especially after this past weekend by the way congratulations (laughs) yeah thank you um you can tell people why you're congratulating yeah uh coming in third at the New York City uh, or the national championships for the 5k at New York City the day before the marathon so uh, you came in right behind uh, Matt Centrowitz and I totally blanked on the first place oh uh, yeah it's actually my former teammate Drew Hunter so um yeah it was, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great race like uh, we we all ran 1353 so it was a very close uh finish there and um you know I, I didn't really think that at the start of this year I'd be kicking down a home straight with like guys that fast you know I'm, I'm typically a a 5k plus runner uh they're like 1500 specialists maybe 5k runners every once in a while and so it, it was really fun like that's a, a different experience <laughs> i have a question about that for for me you know i usually stick to longer distances mm-hmm. um and the 5k hurts so when i run mm-hmm. a 5k it's it's pretty painful mm-hmm. i'm guessing you know it You've got to be running that all out to do that kind of time. Mm-hmm. Is it as painful for you as it is for uh, us amateurs? Yeah, I, I don't think it stops, but I think like that's kind of why it's my favorite event because it, it feels like <laughs> your foot's on the gas the whole time, and like it, it's almost like easy to gauge if you're doing it right, you know, because you're like, is it hurting? Then, you know, if it is, you're doing it right. Then you're doing it right. If it's not hurting, then, you know, maybe you're not, maybe you got to pick it up a little bit. And so, um, well, how long, you know, from the, from the start line, when the gun goes off, how long before you, you're in the pain 
area? Like, how, like, do you get a quarter mile of this is not so bad today, or is it like where does it yeah. start? I, I would say it starts like right around a mile. You know, it's a uh, it's like you're pretty frantic over the first mile because you're trying to find like your positioning. You're trying to like scope out who's feeling good, who's taking like who's making moves early on, and then from the last like 2.1 miles it's like you're like okay like I've probably put myself in a position to where I'm only gonna like change one or two spots after you know at this point you know and and so um so I'd say yeah from like two miles out that's like very important you know you kind of have to like figure yourself out and put yourself where you want to finish or close to where you want to finish you know because sometimes it is nicer to like you know to sit behind somebody and, and kick down sit and the, kick. yeah sit and kick a little bit and so if you're going to do that then you know you put yourself behind whoever you want to kick down over the last quarter mile and um and then you just kind of bide your time <laughs> i mean i guess there's two things like with it only being 13 minutes compared to you know longer <laughs> periods of time for some people the pain is probably more intense but it's shorter lived and then the <laughs> second thing i would i would ask is like um, for, for people that aren't at your skill level that are starting to get into, you know, maybe more competitive 5Ks, maybe trying to, you know, do, make a new PR in the distance, what would be some of your tips for that, for that distance? Uh, I would say the, the biggest tip is like practicing that pace, you know, um, you don't have to do a 5K at your PR every weekend or, you know, even every month necessarily, but I think like I enjoy running like you know 1k or one mile at 5k pace like multiple times at a, you know in a practice like if we do five by mile or five by 1k or something like that at 5k pace it's like probably not five by one mile at 5k pace that's that's a pretty hard one but like five by k at 5k pace is like is a great workout because you're you're hitting that distance you're hitting the pace and you're not like you're not like taking it out of yourself like in a practice setting because you have those like built-in rests between the K repeats. And so, um, that gives me a lot of confidence. It kind of like, it just like shows that I can do it before I actually do it, you know? And so, yeah. <laughs> Is 5k your favorite distance? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I think, uh, I've always been naturally like pushed to bigger distances, but I'm like holding on to the 5k cause, uh, you know, I want to have like, as much success in it as possible. It's <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's dial it back a little bit and talk about kind of how you grew up and maybe how running came into your life. Um, yes. Yeah, so if you want to give a little bit of background, you met, you did mention that you grew up in orange County. Mm-hmm. Is that where, uh, you grew up your whole life? Uh, no, actually. So I was, I was born in the area in like Riverside, California, which is just outside of orange County, um, to, Tanzanian parents um and and so I spent a couple years in the Southern California area and I moved and then I moved back to Tanzania for about five years um yeah there I kind of uh I learned Swahili as like my first language really and oh wow yeah and you know went to school there and all that um and I always like I always knew running was kind of was going to be in my life just because my dad uh, like biological dad, uh, was a runner and he like raced in the area when I was young. And even when I was living in Tanzania, he would kind of, you know, travel back and forth. Um, and so running was kind of like in the background of my life at at all times. Um, and so at seven years old, about five years after I'd moved to Tanzania, I moved back to Southern California and I started living with an adoptive family um there really yeah yeah and so so, does does it feel like when you talk about your biological dad and and having that running growing up does it feel like it's part of like your blood is your way of connecting with your your father yeah I I think so you know I I think you know for maybe like I don't know more touchy or tender subjects you know um I (laughs) think that like yeah like I think because he was always traveling back and forth I didn't really get to spend a ton of time with him and so as I've grown older and like progressed in my running I've I've gotten to like compare you know my times and his times and we've really like connected with that and 
because like when I was when I was younger, you know, before high school, like I didn't really I didn't really talk to him a ton or I didn't see him a ton and so um yeah Are you faster than him <laughs> uh yeah yes i am yeah <laughs> it's like a dad <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, think, uh, you know over the last few years i just surpassed him and so he was a pretty good runner um yeah but yeah and so it's been good to chase him and you know and continue to like push past him because he's excited by that you know he's living have a- you been able to hold hold on to the swahili um no are, sad- you, are you still fluent no, no. Sadly, I, I've not, you know, like, like I said, I started living with the adoptive family and so they weren't, uh, Tanzanian or East African. And so, um, I like learned English like fairly quickly. And then I also picked up Spanish because they're a Mexican oh, wow. American family. Um, I'm not, I'm not fluent in Spanish. I can, you know, I could hold a, a basic, very basic conversation in Spanish, but, um, I'm actually trying to relearn Swahili, and so I've been taking like oh, cool. these like simple lessons from this app, not Duolingo, but I guess like a okay. <laughs> a, a different app, you know, um, that I was told was better. So hopefully one day right. I can I can do that. You're getting the chance to travel. Obviously, uh, you were just in Italy a little while ago with Theodora. Mm-hmm. Um, are you? Do you think that you'll get the chance to do some traveling in Africa, or do you have a desire to? you know, go over there, obviously you're trying to pick up the language back again. Um, mm-hmm. Is that part of the plan? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that would be, that'd be awesome. You know, I have since like, since I moved back, I had, I visited um, Tanzania and that was great. It was, it was very hard to get to. And so it's, it's definitely not something I could plan for every year or every few months, yeah. you know, but no I, Southwest you know, flights. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No Southwest flights, you know, it's like a 40 hour trip from, wow. Like, from Denver to Tanzania, um, just like with layovers and everything. And so, but certainly, yeah, I, uh, you know, I hope that I get to travel to Europe more often for some big road races and big track races. And, um, maybe after those, some of those races, I could just pop on down, <laughs> down South into Africa. Yeah. Kind of like catch the connector. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, coming back to the Diodora thing, you know, they have a shoe coming out and a limited edition version the, uh, of the uh, Equipe Atomo. Mm-hmm. And you did a photo shoot, yeah. video shoot? I, I got a postcard of you this yeah. morning. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. showed up on our doorstep. I don't know if you have it, <laughs> but we had it. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And yeah, it's, maybe talk about that a little bit because the video and promos we saw looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was super fun. I think that I, I enjoyed the connection I had to the project a little bit um you know uh the the shoe is kind of like to commemorate one of italy's like best marathoners ever Jolindo bordin and he mm-hmm. he trained in in alamosa my university's you know hometown and so that is a cool connection yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it, it was really cool like we got to talk uh you know in between shots and um you know runs and all Did that you share a cigarette with him <laughs> no i didn't i i Kind of wish I did it. It seemed like <laughs> I saw everyone rolling a, a cigarette just like on their break time. And I was like, damn, like, <laughs> like I got it's a that. different life over there, isn't it? Yeah, it is like, I was like, Jolindo, you know, he's like at one point was just the best athlete in Italy. And I see him just like in the corner, just, <laughs> you know, ripping through a cig. So, but uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a different time, man. Yeah. Different time. for sure. I mean, it, it is kind of crazy. Like we always think about that when we talk to some of the guys from, you know, that were big in the seventies and, and maybe early eighties and like cigarette pizza and beer was like part of the meal. training plan. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not. And they're running they're running good times. I mean, yeah, Yeah, I mean, they're, they're running times that I'm still chasing, you know, like, it's not like, it's not like in the last like 40 years, things have gotten like so much better because they, because we've stopped drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Right. It's not. And so, um, maybe they were like more natural cigarettes back then, like American spirits or something. No, they're probably (laughs) garbage back then. Think about what's going on in the U S man. They were probably spraying those cross with Agent Orange, (laughs) but yeah. So, yeah. it, it, you know, normally, you know, I look up to in the marathon, there's certain uh, athletes that I'll look up to that inspire me in the shorter distance. And it's funny because in your sport, that 5K is a long distance. Mm-hmm. But um, 
you know, who, who are you looking up to? Who are athletes that you aspire to, to, you know, Mm -hmm. be like? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's changed, uh, you know, throughout my life. Like I've been, I've been running for about 11 years now. Um, and you know, and when I first started running, it was like Kenanisa Bekele, you know, he was like the best in the world and, and he's still around. And I was lucky enough to like see him finish a marathon, um, you know, just this weekend. And that was like oh, insane. Right. But, like, but I also understand that at this point, it's like towards the end of his career and he's going to get beat, you know, and he's going to get beat by these <laughs> new guys. And I, I have to accept that and, and hold him as like one of my personal goats and then also take in the newer generation of, of just great athletes. And so I think I, I, I look, you know, around, I mean, there are people that are younger than me that I like aspire to be like, you know, I think, um, in the States, um, like Cole Hawker, who is a 1500 specialist. I think that he's like, you know, I don't think I'll race him this year or much. Um, but it's like, I, the way that he races is something that I want to like copy because he, it just seems like he's, he's always on, um, and he's like always ready to like shoot for his best. And so it, it's just awesome. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's always, it's always hard to pin down, but I, I think that like, if I can give you extremes, those are the two extremes, you know, I think it's like my, my first ever idol and somebody that I'm currently up and coming yeah, up and coming that I'm like, wow, this yeah. guy does it differently. <laughs> so quick question on strategy then for that. Cause I feel like in the seventies when you had somebody like, um, um, pre Fontaine, like for some reason I totally brain froze <laughs> there when you had a uh, pre Fontaine who was like, Hey, I'm just, I'm not sitting and kicking. I'm going to go. And if you can hang with me, you can hang with me, but I'm going to go all out. And then I feel like in the recent, times it's been more of that sit and kick strategy uh uh 5k racing or or middle distance racing is it do you think the pendulum's switching back to i'm just gonna go balls out and if you can hang with me balls out then that's great yeah i i think i think it is you know and, and i think part of that is like kind of like giving a bit of an ode to the to the younger generation as well like i'd say people my age and younger you know we're starting to realize that like these like the standards like the olympic standard the world championship standards are are much faster than they used than they were just four or five years ago and so you know i think in in certain different races you, you're you're starting to see people that are like i'm i'm gonna go for this i'm gonna like shoot for the standard because like it's not something that's just gonna come easily it's not gonna come from like us just hanging around and kicking over the last two minutes of the race and so um so less competition more going for that the, the golden time. Yeah, yeah, definitely going for the golden time. But I, I think that like, you know, the priorities do change throughout the race. You know, I think like you, you work as a, as a unit, as a, as a whole pack to like run, you know, 2.7 miles of the, of the 5k, okay. like together, you're like, all right, we're all shooting for the standard. And then I think things change, you know, and over the last like 1k, 600 meters, it, then it becomes competitive. And so, it's like races are just like becoming very dynamic and very, uh, very exciting. And in, in, in my mind, because you're still seeing those big kicks, but also fast times, you know, uh, you know, you're not seeing like 14 minute five Ks with like very fast closes. You're seeing like 13, you know, low 13 minute five Ks with very fast closes. And so you get, you get, you know, the best of both. (laughs) Do you feel like when you're running in that and you know, like it's 2.7 miles in, do you all of a sudden feel the energy switch in the group or does somebody just kick off and you're like, I got to go? Yeah, I, it's uh, I'd say the energy does flip, you know, I think um, like at, at least this weekend, you know, that it was a, it was a road 5k. And so maybe it's a slightly different feel than a track 5k. But um, I would say that, yeah, like I, people start to bunch up, you know, because they're, they're getting ready for somebody to like make a move. <laughs> and so the mood is switching. And then eventually somebody is like, all right, we're close enough and I want to go. So, um, you know, there, there is a decisive moment, but it's, but everyone's just ready for it. Like 
you can feel it. Like there's just this like thickness in the air where you're like, oh man, something's going to happen. <laughs> so, About to happen. Yeah. Did, did, what shoe did you end up wearing? I, I didn't catch that. Yeah. So I wore the, the Nike next percent too. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, right now I'm unsponsored. And so I'm going to, I'm going to try like the, <laughs> like as many shoes as I possibly can, you know, with, within limits, you know, those, they're pretty expensive, yeah. but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, well, I, I did want to talk about concerning your training and, you know, you ran the next percent, you said you're on sponsor, but, uh, a lot of people in your now your running team running group are starting to pick up sponsorships we saw Drotty get picked up by solomon frank lar get picked up by ultra mm-hmm. and uh so hopefully that's coming your way but uh, concerning uh, your new team roots running what did make you transition from tin man to roots because that happened pretty recently and, and yeah mm-hmm. just wanted to hear more about that yeah yeah so i think like like i had stated in early like in terms of making the switch from tin man it was kind of I was looking for maybe just a bit more of a consistent, um, consistent future, I guess. Like I, you know, it it felt like at times on Tin Man, I didn't quite know what was going to be, what was going to happen in six months, you know? And, um, that, that kind of like gives you this, like, I just don't like that uncertainty. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and so, and with, uh, and with Roots, I I think that like, once I decided that I wanted a new team, I, I looked for... I kind of asked around and, um, you know, landed at Richard Hansen, Richie. Um, and he like definitely borrowed a lot from coach V Hill, who is kind of the, the godfather of distance running, but also got his start at Adam state. And so I, you know, it was going to be a training. So you're loyal to your alumni. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I figured like, Oh, it's under the V Hill system. I used to train under the V Hill system. Like, cool. let's go back to, to my roots and see if that's going to help me out. And I think so far it is. We'll, we'll see how it goes for the half marathon distance and the track distances. But yeah, I'm excited. Have you run half marathon distance before? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've run. Okay. One. Yeah. Uh, and so, okay. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, you know, you'd have to like dig up the result because it was, it was a fairly small one. Um, it was a part of like the, have you guys, do you guys, have you guys heard of the Michigan Akiden or the Michigan pro Akiden relay? No, oh, no, I actually haven't. No, no. So it's actually happening next Wednesday. Um, okay. so, but last year they had their like maiden event and they just added a, a half marathon like the next weekend because they're like, Oh, well we have this space and we have all these good athletes. People are there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. Well, we just time trial, a half marathon together. And, um, they allowed a few extra athletes, uh, to join in like myself and a few others. And so, yeah. And so that, that I got, I got to ask about, um, so I feel like right now we have, there's almost like if you look at the runners out there, there's a little bit of an Avengers thing going on. What I mean by that, is there's definitely people that stand out as characters. Like you have Craig Angles with his mustache and his, you know, uh, mullet and you've got the glasses. And I feel like that's, you know, pretty easy to pick you out of a crowd Mm -hmm. glasses. I have contacts in because when I run, I can't stand if my glasses get fogged up Mm -hmm. now, obviously, you know, I'll wear sunglasses and stuff, but my prescription lenses are a little thicker Mm -hmm. and they don't feel as comfortable on my face. How do you, how do you, like, funny. this is my next question. So. How, how do you <laughs> decide to, to run with glasses and they look like they're pretty solid prescriptions? Mm, oh yeah. No, I am like blind as a bat. And so <laughs> like, uh, I think, I don't know, like I couldn't survive in the real world without them. But, um, I always say that about me. Like, uh, if I was back in the caveman days, yeah, I would have gotten be, eaten right away. Literally like 200 years ago, we'd be dead. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'd have to stick to gathering. That's for sure. <laughs> you know? Well, you're pretty fast. You might just let Robbie and I get eaten <laughs> yeah. and get yeah. on your way. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a mix. And so, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to, I think, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I, I always like, I didn't get glasses until I was like 17. So that was pretty late, especially for my prescription. You're like, wow, look at the world. It's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And so, but then I realized like, yeah, like I'm one of the few kids out here, like wearing glasses. And and I kept that on through, um, you know, through college and that became my thing. And 
Uh, now I'm, I'm starting to like get some of those, I'm getting those bad, bad glasses day, uh, in race days, like a little bit more often. And, and so I've gotten contacts and I race in contacts. Sometimes I race in glasses other times. And, um, you know, like my, the race before this 5k was in Philadelphia and I did the, the broad street 10 miler and it was, it was like raining and oh no yeah and so and i and i'd only brought glasses and so like that's the worst yeah thankfully it was a straight shot and i was just like i saw another runner that had like this bright yellow jersey and i just like was like i have to i have to stay close to this person because they're gonna be my guide to the finish line and I was oh, like, that's insane. Don't you wish you were fast enough that you could do that? You'd just be like, I'll just stay on somebody. <laughs> now, the thing is, like, you could, to keep the Clark Kent look, you mm-hmm. could get, you know, the contacts and then just put, like, you know, lenses in, in, in a glass. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. You, know, you could maintain it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and take them off if it's raining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that, like, that's that's my plan. I think one day maybe I'll get Lasix or something like that and... I, uh, are you terrified yeah. like in the in the broad street were you terrified you'd step in a pothole or something because that would be like freaking me out oh yeah i mean it was kind of it was the concern i think there is a a couple times there were like only a few turns but there are times where like okay. on the curve i was just like oh man like i have to like i have to pay attention <laughs> yeah, i had to focus because yeah. like <laughs> like you know while the the runner ahead of me was like they were just kind of going through the curve they could step off onto the next level and step off right. easily i was just like I was like doing high knees onto the curb just to make sure I was on it. <laughs> I bet in a way that takes your mind off the the actual race and the the pain of running. You can you're just focused on <laughs> just staying trying alive. To see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny because I used to run without my contacts, so I'd wear glasses. I didn't even have contacts, <laughs> and I'd run around uh, Baltimore. Is pretty, you know, you've got your regular running routes, and I would run past people. And they'd be like, why, why didn't you wave or In- say hello? Including me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't see you. <laughs> hey, hey, Thomas. And he just runs right past me. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'm sure that, like, that's happened to me. Like, before I had glasses, that certainly happened to me. Like, I probably just ignored people. and. Yeah, people thought you were aloof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But... Did you, are you gearing up for uh, the Olympic trials coming up for I guess now we're two years out. Yeah, uh, the summer. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't say like for the marathon. I'm guessing or the. No, I, I'm guessing. I was going to ask you what distance. Yeah, yeah. And so for for the next, I guess, Olympic trials, I would hope to go for the 5K and the 10K, um, and you know, hopefully qualify in one or both of those. Um, but yeah, and so I would I'd like to stick on the track until 2024, and then run a marathon and the fall of 2024 um you know i think that but that's the goal right now Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah, that's the goal i I would you know since track season is like fairly limited it's like you know it's february to june and if you're lucky august um you know i I try to race on the roads from september to january you know and so um I'll, i'll run my half marathons my like 10k road races stuff like that and in, in this time of the year and then i'll transition into track season uh from february to, to august <laughs> cool um so if you wouldn't be running what is uh what's something that you would be doing i guess in life i know i think you went to school for business management mm-hmm. is that correct? yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i did a, a like a degree in business and sports management i um I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, you know, I think that, (laughs) I think running has been this, uh, like it was the, it was the first thing that I like had goals with, you know, I think I, um, like, I guess like it was like, it's the most ambitious thing I'm like I have in my life, which, you know, maybe is a, is a weird balance. Maybe not a, I, I need to create a, as, as a different balance. I don't know. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just go you for seem it. to be pretty good at it. Yeah. yeah. If you were, if you were like our talent level, I might be like, you may need a backup. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I think that's like the, yeah, there's some truth, you know, I, I have to like go all in for running and, and put a lot of energy into running. But, you know, I think that <laughs> like, I also have to create like, you know, plan B's because like, I probably, I probably won't always run. And 
it, running won't always go to plan. And so it's like, if I got critically injured next month, like, what would I do? I, it, it's hard to say, but, um, like, currently I work for Strava. I do, like, a, oh, cool. I, uh, I do, like, customer service, technical support. Uh, for them. Oh, great. I have a couple questions. Yeah, a couple <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm clocked in, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. right, cool. Wait, for real, though. I had, I had to throw this out Oh, there. wow. He's going to give you a suggestion. I have a Strava orange wristband on. I can say whatever I want. Yeah, he's true. Um, <laughs> can we please figure out how to put GIFs and memes into the comment section oh, on Strava? He's, he's dreaming hardcore. All I want to be able to do is add my shoes on my mobile app. You can do it now can't, on the mobile app. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Huh? You can do that. Boy, I just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the worst part, but then, you, yeah, like a, as of a month or two ago. Yeah, we do need GIFs yeah. and memes. Yeah, it's a so, very new yeah. feature. Run. I, I'd say the, the GIFs, I, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I think, I mean, to, to tell you the truth, even if it was on in the pipeline, I don't, you know, I'm not at the state where I could even say that. But, yeah, that, that would be, a, like, a fun addition, you know, because it would, it, would, it would add to the kudos effect, you know, of, like, this is how it, this is how excited I am about your run. It's like, and, I would say even maybe uh, like tiered comments. So when you reply to one person, it's not like you're replying to the whole like chat section, which is a little. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It, you guys, I just thrown out my little. Did you bring a whiteboard with you? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you get the whiteboard I, I, out. You got, got the whiteboard. Yeah, get all these ideas out. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm an ideas guy, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so you know, not not to like. Well, because like I couldn't implement these uh, these things, because again, I'm just like, uh, hey, my run didn't upload. Can I get some help? Like, if I'm, you I'm can right. learn Swahili, you can learn how to code. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll, yeah, I guess we'll it's just hack thing. into the system, dude. Yeah, <laughs> just, absolutely. Just do some, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that means like your off time when you're not running and what you're doing for fun is carb loading and going to Strava and mm. like what else? Yeah, I, I mean, I. Uh, just hanging out, you know, I think like running again, you know, it's like part of the energy you put in has to be like, you know, equaled in, in recovery that you put in. And so like, it's a, outside of like work and running, it's, it's pretty boring because I'm like, okay, I have to get ready for, for my next run or tomorrow's run or whatever. And so, um, in the off season, I, you know, I definitely like to let loose, like kind of see friends go out downtown. That's like, I get like a month of that, you know, per year where I get to just like live a normal mid twenties lifestyle. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And so, and, you know, kind of just like hike, hang out with my girlfriend. Uh, It's kind of um, try to be as wholesome as possible, you know, because sometimes I don't get to. So if we're out at Flatirons, are we going to see you and your girl? walking around yeah yeah maybe yeah we'll, we'll see <laughs> depending right. on the weather depending on the time of the year yeah that's that's possible yeah <laughs> now uh, we always kind of ask this question like uh do, what is your like treat from running do you do do you drink alcohol do you binge on sweets like what is your thing yeah it, it's a mix of both of those i'd say i was like just talking to my girlfriend just this weekend because i was like oh there's like I, I i race and there's always like two or three days where i'm like every meal I want to have like a Coke with it, you know, <laughs> like, the reason I'm like, it's like just the sugar or I don't know, you know, that's like definitely something that I lean into. Um, and then like the day of the race, like it's always nice to like go get a, go get a beer or go get like a margarita or something like that. Just to kind of like be like, just to let loose. Um, just cause in college we had this like rule kind of unspoken but spoken you know weird rule of like from like august 1st to december 1st you're not drinking a sip of alcohol like oh wow oh, really yeah and that's so, strict in, in your college was very different than mine <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly it, it wasn't it wasn't good you know because like come december 2nd you know we ever got hammered <laughs> yeah like we got hammered and it was like definitely not the healthy way of drinking uh for like a week the right? old forbidden fruit yeah, yeah exactly and so and so now I've, i i kind of want that like happy medium of like i can i can have a beer during the season i just i shouldn't have six beers in a night but i i can have sure. one and if i indulge two or three you know yeah so uh, what about playlists can we get into playlists into playlists i i think i'm like definitely a, a 
creature of habit. And so, like, I will download a few songs. I'll listen to them for, like, six weeks, just, like, over and over. And that'll be, like, my running playlist or workout playlist or whatever. And then so you I'll, do listen while you run sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I, I try not to do it for workouts just because I'll have teammates or... And I try not to do it, like, for all my easy days just because there's always... There's also that, like, that time that I like to enjoy running for, like, what it is, you know? It's, like, you get to hear the wind, hear the... Space out. You know, yeah. It's, like, a peaceful... It's a peaceful moment, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I, I'd say I, I give it Mondays as kind of my reset day where I get to run, like, fairly slow and, like, I get to put in my headphones and just, like, kind of take in, like like what I had done over the whole week and I get to visualize like what I want to do over the next week and maybe future races. And so music helps you visualize me. Robbie. <laughs> yeah, actually I do. And sometimes I, it's a little weird to me because I feel like I visualize like way too much. <laughs> like <it's laughs> That's hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I feel like even when I just do my, like all I think about is running when I'm mm -hmm. running a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you may, you may need to start meditating so you can follow your <laughs> yeah. style. I mean, not all so, of them, but yeah. So back to the playlist, though. What, what's on your playlist right now? What's on my playlist right now? I think I've been listening to, let's see, I'll pull it up. I've been listening to a lot of, like, UK, like, British rap. It's called, like, Grime. Uh, it, it's a little different, and that's been, like, what I've been into for whatever reason. It'll change in a couple of months. Like, man's not hot. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess I guess that's kind of in the in the realm, but um, it, it's, it's British. It's yeah, maybe, maybe a bit more of a <laughs> more legit artist. I guess I I don't yeah. know if he's legit or not, but yeah, I think like Stormzy is like an artist that I've been listening to a lot. Uh, Skepta, he's a, he's another British rapper, grime artist, and so okay, cool. yeah, you know, those are a couple that I've been like tuning into and. Uh, it's just cool. Like I've, I've always listened to like hip hop and rap and it's always been like American, uh, you know, the, the classic East coast, West coast or whatever <laughs> rap. Yeah. Uh, it's so it, Where, do you land on East coast or West coast? I know you're living in orange County. Yeah. But... Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't think I, I land anywhere necessarily. I think I listen to it all. Um, like I like the Wu-Tang clan and they're, a east coast uh <laughs> like group yeah. so it's i'm not i'm not partial to anyone because you know i'm not i'm not necessarily affiliated with uh <laughs> with any of the, <laughs> any of the group. <laughs> did you get did you get a chance to see the wu-tang documentary that was i think it was on amazon for a while i think it was hulu or something yeah well, yeah yeah it's like a, it's like i mean it's it's kind of like, like a mini series yeah yeah, but yeah it's like a yeah. Mini series with different dramatization actors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I have been like, I've seen the, the trailers. I haven't gotten around to, to watch. I, I, I didn't watch it either. It was really good. Like it just good, you know, it goes really in depth of course. And like mm -hmm. uh, kind of interviews them now and looking back and everything. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. Cause like growing up on them and then you have this certain image and then just seeing them now as, you know, 45 year old men or whatever. And yeah. it's a little different. It's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, it's good. I mean, it's kind of cool. They've kind of like, um evolved into like different different artists now i think like mm -hmm. one of them i forget who i think is it raekwon he works with theodora actually with yeah the, and so we that, have a limited edition chef yeah um <laughs> exactly. uh, theodora running shoe yeah, yeah exactly and then that's that's kind of cool that's like uh you know i mean i guess a lot of artists have shoes or they're signed with shoe companies but like yeah you know it, it's uh it's not like they're still trying to be these hard people that that they were 20 years ago because like their, their <laughs> lives are a lot cushier now and uh it's probably yeah <laughs> i think that helps a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah you know, you, when you're not out uh hustling all the time yeah I but yeah i mean it, it is interesting because i did grow up at that that stage of of kind of like when the rap battles and beefs and all that stuff was hitting mm -hmm. like it's uh flashpoint yeah and it is interesting to see even like you know you see like uh ice cube and um he, you know he's he's gone into comedy and it's softer it's nicer you know it's you yeah know, it's just weird from when i was a I kid respect it. <laughs> nwa was like <laughs> scary you know yeah. I mean, you know it, it's like personal development and you're like all yeah. right like at least you're not where you were like 
you know, again, third I mean, year. even LL Cool J is on, like, a <laughs> yeah. cop show or something. I, I mean, mean, I would be, too. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, no. Money's so, money. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's cool, and, and I think that's why, like, I re- respect hip-hop, and I think that, like, you know, the real parts, the real parts of hip-hop are, like, are, you know, are cool to follow just because it's, you know, they're, they're very genuine people. I think there's like a point where it's, it does cross over though. <laughs> it's Shakespearean. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, the Romulan, what is it? The um, Romeo and Juliet, though. What's the two families names? Uh, oh, Capulet and Montague. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Capulet and Montague. It, it, that's East Coast, West Coast. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know. Exactly. But yeah. Um, yeah. But back to, back to running a little bit. You said you ran in the next percent too for this last uh, New York City uh, 5K. And I'm guessing you're trying different shoes and, and you said within within reason. What are some of the other uh, shoes that you're running in that you're you're enjoying that are for race day, like plated racers or uh, super shoes? Yeah, yeah so I, um, you know, when I was with Tin Man, we were Adidas. And so for a while, I, um, you know, that was the shoe that I'd race with on the roads. Um, I did like the, the first version, you know, I think it was... Uh, it was a good shoe, and it was like, I think it's a good uh, competitor to the Nike. Um, I haven't gotten them yet, but I'm hoping to get the the Asics, like Meta Speed. Meta Speed Sky. Yeah, Meta Speed Sky, and so those those look cool. I think I was I was like watching a video on like, just like the thought and the science they put into it, and the, like how they made the two different versions of it for like cadence runners, edge, yeah. stride runners, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, like. I, I don't truly understand it, but I'm like, well, if they're putting it, you know, if they're putting so much thought and like science into it, like they must be, they must have gotten a good product. And so, yeah, um, it's, a, it's a great shoe. It, it, I would say when you said uh, the Asics, I mean, the Adidas one, I, I know what you mean by when you said you like the first one. Yeah. I'm guessing you also had the second one. The second one, I also uh, didn't like as much as the first one. No, I don't okay, know if that's actually, what you're alluding to. No, no, actually, I didn't have the second one, but I was... Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, like, at the running store just deciding between the Nike or the Audios Pro 2, and I was like, well, like, I already have an Adidas shoe. Like, why Like, why would I be loyal to a shoe company that's not paying me? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, yeah, it's good, to, it's good to try them all. I mean, they're, <laughs> they do have product. I would say the if I was going to put in a tier, the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 and the Metaspeed Sky <laughs> are, are pretty pretty mm. like right neck and neck okay yeah yeah so i mean i think that like i have a half coming up um in, a, in just under a month and so we might have to make a call for him yeah Wait, you, what size are you, what size do you out of curiosity uh i'm size nine um i can wear eight and a half right oh. now. yeah yeah we got you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know i, I think i you know i want to you know I, w- I would decide still you know i think um uh, it I think like I, I did enjoy the Nikes a lot, <laughs> and so, but, but I would certainly like work out. And, Wait, how soon is this half? Um, in like 25 days or something like that, just over three weeks. Yeah. Okay. We'll make a call <laughs> after the show. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I, I feel like the, yeah, the Minispeed Sky is very close. It has more rocker maybe. Like more, I think this transition is a little bit smoother. Maybe it had the what it is is it has a uh, more pitched toe spring, mm-hmm. so you come off the ball of your foot a little faster. I feel than the next percent. Okay. So you really feel the plate work that toe off. Mm-hmm. So that's where I feel the differences between the shoes, especially if you're a faster runner. I yeah. think you can really feel that kind of like pitch that's going to help you roll through the shoe. That so they they're big into their. Um, what do they call it? Guide sole or what's the technology that they use? Uh, <laughs> it's speed roll for Saucony. Yeah, it's not I, Meta it, Rocker. That's the yeah. Hoka one, I think. Yeah. I think it's guide sole. But uh, so it's just, it just has a very pitched toe so that when you come off that front, yeah, you're just like takes rolling off. off. Yeah. And the rubber is super great, like yeah. as far as tackiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. I think that, like, I don't know why. I think when I like see that a shoe company is like, going with like a tire company for their rubber or something like that. I'm like, Oh wow. They, they like 
they shot it down. Like it, it impresses me just like that much more. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get them. Like, <laughs> yeah. The o- only thing is like Puma did their own, they tested all these different rubbers yeah. and they ended up going with their own formulation and the Puma grip is insane. It's the best. Yeah. Okay. Is this the, the nitro or the, the nitro uses LT, which isn't as good as the regular uh-huh. Puma grip. I don't think anyway, I, I, I think it's lighter, right. mm-hmm. but yeah. it, it loses some of the tackiness. We're going in Austin, Texas. We're going to help them uh, promote their new racing carbon plated shoe mm-hmm. that's coming out. And I don't know what rubber's on that one yet. It kind of looks like it does have the power but grip, but yeah, like on their daily trainers, like the uh, DV and the uh, velocity, it has the Puma yeah. grip, which is quite mm-hmm. excellent. Okay. Yeah. Liberate too. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, you'll have to check out the, the new shoe coming out from them looks promising as far as I didn't feel like the deviate elite was it wasn't like when we're talking about being on the same level as like the nike and the mm-hmm. stuff i didn't feel like the yeah it was quite there i mean honestly molly seidel what she's doing with that shoe is, is insane, insane. <laughs> I mean, that's what i was gonna say i was like oh does this mean like molly is just like that much better <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah molly molly's next level yeah. yeah well yeah i mean it's it's insane i mean again somebody i got to watch finish uh on sunday and you know, another like inspiring athlete and somebody that I'm like looking up towards just because, um, you know, she's just about my age, maybe a year older or two, and she's been through it. It seems like uh, it's you know she's been injured and she's been like down and out a couple of times. In yeah. her <laughs> Which is amazing because like right now she's just laying. It seems like everything she touches turns to gold. <laughs> yeah. Like you would never know that. Uh, yeah, that was good. Like, I got it. <laughs> um, but uh, it is, it's like she just, like you, like I know people were like, well, she probably won't do so well in New York because mm-hmm. she's coming off the big win at the Olympics and, you know, so much pressure and this and that. And then she goes and she lays down the fastest American time on that course mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And she's just like establishing herself as like one of the best marathoners, American marathoners ever or marathoners ever, you know, yeah. she, in that I'm thinking con- Joan Benoit, Dina mm-hmm. Castor, mm-hmm. Molly Seidel. Yeah. She's had to have one of the best best years for sure. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, how was it being in New York for for the marathon and just being there in general? Yeah, yeah. I so I've I've been to New York a, a few times now, and I, every time I, I think to myself like, oh, it'd be it'd be cool to live here, but as long as I knew I was <laughs> I was gonna leave, <laughs> you know, I think that yeah. like, uh, you know. Like I said about Southern California, it's like I don't like the busy lifestyle, and, and New York is certainly busier than like Southern different. California. Yeah. And so, um, like on crack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like turn it up to eleven. And so, um, I mean, I do think it'd be fun, like to do a month, like running around Central Park, and you mm-hmm. know, just chilling and meeting all the different run crews that are there and having fun. Mm-hmm. And you know, th- there'd be tons of opportunity to do some fun things with like. Sidious Mag and with Lost Boys and Roses and all those people, you know, it, especially in your position. And, mm-hmm. and but then again, being able to as soon as it gets a little cold, shoot back out to, <laughs> you know, Boulder or something. Exactly. I mean, yeah, the the cold. It's like starting to get a little cold here in Boulder, but the cold. It's like much better here because it's it's so. It's dry. a different kind of cold. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, like I mean, we we face like plains and just dry land, and so we don't get like moisture with our cold, you know? And so, yeah. um, I would, I would be in like Boulder for most winters, you know, unless like if, if I didn't count Southern California, cause that's what Boulder has like the most sunny days of any place in the U S doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think, I mean, just Colorado in general. And so, yeah. <laughs> well, the, I mean the, the Rockies get a lot of snow. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so Boulder- we're just on the right side of the Rockies, you know, I think exactly like, if you go to Aspen or Telluride or those towns, like you, you're not running through the winter unless it's on a treadmill, right. but you're cross country skiing. Yeah. You're cross country skiing to like work into the store probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Cool. Um, I don't know. Anything else, Thomas? No, nah, man. You, I, I'm really digging watching your, your progress here, Sydney. And it's uh, yeah. pretty exciting. I, I think, you know, I put my money on you. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think I, I would put my money on me. I feel like I'm in a good trajectory and, and I feel like yeah. I feel confident with where I'm at. And 
um, what I can do, and, and you know, it, it's just an exciting time. You know, it's it's hard to put it all into words, and so I'll try, I'll try to put it into running. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be cool. Uh, we'll have to have you on again once you've qualified for the Olympics, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and are, are going to where are we going next? Paris. Uh, Paris, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, we can, we'll follow your whole, whole trip there. I mean, maybe we'll have you on before or, that. Yeah. If you get a sponsor and they're yeah. like, Hey, oh, I love that. Guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, low, a low exposure for them. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be on again if you guys uh, feel like, you know, it's the right time and yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Are you going to be in Austin, uh, Texas for, uh, the end of this month? Uh, for no, I mean, not for this month. I'll be, I, there might be a track race in like the spring there. Uh, oh, okay. you, sh you should head down for the running event. <laughs> yeah, sure. they have nothing going on. <laughs> yeah. running event, the... the running event is a conference in Austin, Texas, uh -huh. with all the manufacturers, all the shoe companies, <laughs> all all that that goes on. Uh -huh. We'll be there. We're going to be doing well, an Deodora's event for gonna... Diodora, mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing an event for Puna. Pu Puna. Puna. <laughs> it's a new company. <laughs> Don't <laughs> sign with them. Yeah, Puma. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be talking about, we're going to be meeting with them and talking about the new shoes and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're going to, we're going to be doing some shakeout runs and some barbecue eating and that okay. stuff. So, uh, we're live yeah. podcast with their team. Yeah. yeah. I guess what, when is the, when is the event? Cause I mean, within the That's next November, month. Th November 30th to December 2nd. So that might fall right in line with your half marathon. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, skip that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we'll yeah. take you around. We'll get, before you leave Austin, you'll have a sponsor. I promise. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. See, I think if uh, if I could have some, uh, you know, some vouchers, on, you know, off in a distance, then that'll be great. You know, put in a word yeah. for me, yeah. everyone. Just slip right, my name well, number. We got you. Yeah, we'll <laughs> like, we'll plant some bugs in people, bugs, worms in people's ears. What's that thing? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a saying that says, "Whatever." You know yeah. What I mean. All right. Plant wiretap the room. Yeah, just, <laughs> so, we're going to do some CIA yeah. stuff. All right. Anyways, well, yeah. this has turned into a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully we haven't scared you off. Believe in the run too bad, but we'll, no, we'll, no, get, you, we'll get you back on. No, no, definitely. And so, so yeah, and I, I appreciate it again. So. For sure. All right. We'll talk to All you right. again soon. Thanks, yep. Sydney. Yep.